Everyone, welcome to the Villa Together podcast. And this week I'm joined by a very, very special guest, which is Dan Morgan from the Heart of the Holt podcast or channel, whichever. I don't know. What do you, what do you kind of, you say you're more of a, a kind of all round? Yeah, so uh, I, I do. I'm kind of responsible for a lot of the things on Heart of the Holt. I help run the account. Uh, I didn't create it. I can't take credit for that. That was uh, an amazing guy called Jack, um, who is, is very busy at the moment. Actually, I've not heard from him in a while. Um, but luckily, he kind of lets us uh, just sort of get on with things with the account. So just day to day stuff like putting tweets out, uh, editing articles, uh, uploading podcasts for the Villa Filler podcast, as you kind of alluded to there. Yep. Uh, so it, it's kind of it's very chaotic. I'm, I'm always kind of married to my phone um a bit too much um some people would say uh but yeah uh love every minute of it mate it's uh it's a lot of work but you know i think uh you know like like yourselves with with, with your podcast uh if you enjoy doing it then it doesn't really feel like much work does it yeah i mean that, that's the thing you get um you kind of especially now i think because i think you've heart of the heart's been going about four four years i think uh yeah on, on youtube we've been going for four years the account's been active for like 12 years on twitter not, not oh, 12 wow. years sorry 2012 i think um uh, yeah, so but yeah years, um yeah. so it's been going it's been going for a while but uh in terms of like the, the creation of the channel it was something that i uh like really pushed for at the time and i think a few people didn't really who didn't necessarily understand youtube were just kind of a bit like oh well we're not really like okay you can do it we'll see um so like if you've seen some of the earlier video videos on the channel they're just kind of like a bit of a mismatch there are some podcasts that don't have dan in obviously the podcast has grown to, to be uh mine and dan wiseman's thing yeah uh there are vlogs from other people there's all kinds of, of, of different content uh just which kind of helped us find our feet in terms of podcasting and and, and like where we're at now and there's certainly more things that we want to be doing with the channel um videos wise but it's kind of difficult not being able to go to games yeah. um like a lot of the, the like the the vlogging thing is taken by other people you know like you've got people like villa on tour he kind of made that his own thing yeah so we kind of uh with with some of our like more vlog style videos we like to try and uh kind of have a like a story about them when we do them so we did this thing on the uh, the League Cup, which we didn't follow up, which we said we would in the video, which I'm annoyed at because obviously we made it to the final. Um, we kind of yeah, didn't I, think about our yeah, history. I remember what I remember watching that going back to you know our previous history and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so we kind of it, it was that, but then it turned into me, Dan, and our friend Elliot going to the game, uh, which I think is just a bit of a kind of different twist uh, on just you know a, a normal vlog, just trying to keep it. Uh, engaging for people i guess um yeah. But yeah obviously at the moment that kind of content can't be happening um, yeah <laughs> we've got other ideas in terms of things we want to do it's just uh at the moment just trying to get it busy because dan's doing his masters at the moment uh, i'm in my final year of uni uh you know all that paired with running the account all the other things that we do it's, it's, it's very busy really <laughs> yeah i mean that's the thing like kind of people have mentioned to me um you know because there's obviously there's a lot of I think there's a there's a bit of a difference in there. You guys are a bit of everything, you know. You're a, you are established as you know. I say a channel, but it's more than that, isn't it? Because like like you you mentioned the there's a lot of writing stuff and things like that. Whereas we primarily we we just kind of do podcasts, and I think a lot of other channels podcasts do just what one kind of thing. So it's kind of you know I don't want to kind of put everyone into the same group, but there's a lot of um, villa accounts, I suppose especially especially now and stuff like that and people have said oh there's loads of them you know while you're doing it i think it all comes down to what you mentioned it's we do it because we enjoy it yeah exactly you know and i, I think we'd all love to you know be able to you know come on come on and do podcasts with you every week but obviously you know it's, it's just one of them you, you get more people involved it's harder to, to then organize doing one thing isn't it okay we'll do we'll do post-match podcasts okay well it's going to be the four or five of us oh, okay well we're not all free and it's just makes things a bit more chaotic so Obviously, for you guys, kind of having, I suppose, different people for different things and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like, like we said, and there's, um, I think the, the Villa Talks podcast came out around the same, same time as ours. And I speak to um, speak to them a fair bit, and they've just said the same thing. There's a load of Villa accounts out there on, you know, Twitter doing podcasts, things like that. But we just do it because we love it. And, you know, yeah. we can't, 
I think I think a lot of a lot of channels and, and podcasts and stuff like that would love to try and get as many fans and people involved as possible, but it's just not it's just not possible, is it really? Unless you go to, you know, you kind of go to to games and you stand there and you just like, you know, who wants to talk about the game? So it makes it a bit difficult, and especially now at the moment. So it's one of them, and you know what it's like. It's you know, being a kind of sports fan, a football fan people like ourselves can talk about football for hours on end. And when absolutely. it comes to Ast- Aston Villa, something that we absolutely love, you know, we can kind of, you know, go beyond hours. It's, you know, it's our passion. It's our love, isn't it? So, so, you know, that's that, I think that's, that's where it comes from, from, from me. Um, how did you kind of initially get started with and get involved in the heart of the Holt? Uh, so they kind of just put a tweet out looking for writers and that's how it kind of happened at the time. I was in uh, my first year of sick form uh, and then I started, you know, doing a few previews and reviews. I didn't really know what I wanted to do yeah. after sick form. I didn't really have much of a plan. I was doing media, um, but that was kind of with the viewpoint of let's go into maybe film or television. Um, I then kind of... Uh, I think doing Heart of the Hole actually made me fall in love with Villa in a completely different way. Like I've always been a fan. Yeah. Uh, I've always like gone down as much as I could. Um, but then I think, you know, I was kind of at that age where uh, I could like go by myself. So like, I, you know, I got, I'm a season ticket holder with my dad and we go all the time. Um, and I love that. And I wouldn't change anything about that. But at the time he was working a lot more. So I'd kind of, you know, after school, I'd run home, get changed, you know, when we're in the championship and uh, quickly get back into Birmingham for uh, for them Tuesday night games at quarter to quarter to eight. Yeah, uh, I don't miss them, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so, yeah, I think doing Heart of the Holt, it kind of brought me closer to Villa. Um, you know, as I say, got a season ticket with my dad, stuff like that. Uh, it all started with, with the writing, um, which I didn't, particularly think I was well I know I wasn't that good at the start um I was doing A-level English uh and my A-level English teacher was like oh now you're never going to become a journalist uh and I was like oh, okay like challenge accepted so here we yeah. are trying to make it um but no I th- it, it, it's it's one of them kind of opportunities really where uh you just kind of kind of seize it like I saw the tweet I instantly uh emailed them was like look really like to, to write for you guys to see you hiring uh no, use that loosely obviously it's not paid yeah, yeah. um but <laughs> yeah it, it all just kind of escalated from there really i got to know the guys um like cal had a large part running the account back in the day callum richardson yeah. uh, uh he, he's very busy himself at the moment but he's looking to try and get back into it a bit more which is great uh there was a really good like we were a really good group of mates who were doing it um and i think it was it's, it was kind of interesting because you know we're these kind of 16 17 year old lads there was a few people, uh, Ryan Pitcher, one of them, obviously Jack, who created the account, who are, uh, you know, sort of in their were in their late twenties, just kind of were like, okay, well, we kind of have an idea on how blogging works, but you guys are the younger, fresher faces. Like, we need to like try and elevate this, basically. So yeah, as I say, it kind of started with the writing. I really uh, pushed hard for for a YouTube channel, uh, obviously because, like. Anyone could create a YouTube channel. Anyone could do anything. Like I could have created a YouTube channel by myself. Like that would have been fine. But obviously, I wanted I wanted it to be part of the Holtz thing. Uh, so I kind of needed their permission because, as well, uh, it's it's a very kind of difficult subject because heart of the Holt. Like I'm not heart of the Holt, but for someone you know like yourself who listens to the podcast, it's very easy for for you or anyone else who who watches the channel to instantly go right okay he's heart of the whole or dan wiseman's heart of the whole um which is why i try to stay away from the tweeting i think it's best to have uh you know one consistent footballing opinion otherwise you're going to get so many yeah uh, different replies you know like because i uh i know back in the day i certainly had a different opinion on steve bruce than than jack did who is the owner of the account uh it's not really my place to suddenly start going oh um you know uh, I hate Bruce when he may have liked Bruce or whatever. And it just, it, yeah, you know what Twitter's like anyway, it kind of creates a bit of a, a bit of a storm that's, that's unnecessary. So uh, in terms of tweeting, it's kind of strictly just articles, podcasts, whatever. And then yeah. obviously if there's, if there's something that, you know, we all know we collectively agree with in terms of a cause um, that'll get tweeted out as well. Like uh, Cal recently did an article on the pay-per-view uh, 
situation, which, you know, is a messy one. Uh, yep. It got quite a bit of backlash, which I, I, I don't understand because, you know, I, I feel like people, uh, people are kind of united on, on, in, on the front that yeah. we shouldn't be paying this £15. Yeah, um, I mean, that, that, that's the impression I get. I think I've don't seen it. I don't think I've seen anybody yeah. um, kind of say, yes, I'm going to pay every week. I'm, I'm happy for that. Um, so it does seem to be a universal kind of thing. So, yeah, that is surprising. Yeah, but I think it, it comes with uh, running an account that big. You've got people, you, you know, you're going to get so many different people. Obviously, we're all united in the sense that we're Villa fans, but, uh, you know, especially when it comes to politics, like we've had so many people in our comments uh, telling us they've unsubscribed, stick to, stick to football, all this kind of stuff when we were speaking up on something like Black Lives Matter, uh, which, you know, it's kind of sad to hear, but yeah. um, Dan and I will both always say what we believe, you know, the, uh, the Villa Villa podcast is uh, our platform. And, you know, I think when some, uh, a lot of social injustice kind of happens, we feel like it is our responsibility to talk on it. I hope you don't get any horrible comments about this on your podcast. <laughs> um, I, I hope I'm not bringing that barrage of trolls over. Um, if you do, if, if it happens, you're in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're gonna send all the <laughs> comments to me. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's just as I say, it's kind of really all all formed from me really pushing for this YouTube channel. Um, and here we are. I mean, like four years later, it's been really long. Um, and uh, yeah, it's finally just it's taken off a little bit. So it's uh, it's kind of nice when you've put so much work in. Um, you know, albeit at the time may not have been. Uh, you know, I, I look back on some of the videos and I cringe some of the editing, but you know that kind of comes yeah. with it. You, you know, you you're learning on the track. Yeah, like no one's taught us how to. Yeah, exactly. Or, exactly. You, 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 I, I think as well, you, you start and you you almost you have a vision of of what you want to do or maybe what you want it to become. So the bits in between, you just learn, and it's kind of like learning on the job. And it's you know, as well as because everyone's got other things they're doing, their jobs, their studies, whatever it may be. So when you're doing stuff, you can't kind of fully concentrate and commit to stuff. So, I mean, I'm the same. We've we've only probably done about 20, 20 videos or something, you know, 20 pods. Um, and the first few I look and I think, what, what the hell is that? You know, it's rubbish. Like, whether it be the graphics or the quality, the audio or something like that. And you just think, but it just comes with experience, doesn't it? And it's, yeah, you know, no, no one's going to be perfect from the off. Um, you know, so it's one of them. It's tough, but um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I watch your stuff quite a lot. Um, you and Dan together, um, and it's great. I just I just love it. I, thing is, that, you know, I find myself at home sometimes. I'll I'll be doing stuff, you know, editing stuff and whatever um, on the computer from from the stuff that we've done. I'll have my phone in front of me and I'll stick, you know, you guys on and whatever. And it's just uh, you've 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 both got a real good presence, which is which is kind of what you need for. For doing this kind of stuff so it's I really good that. you know i yeah, really enjoy really enjoy your stuff and it, there's a lot of stuff out there i think it's at the end of the day we all you know we all talk about villa because we love talking about villa don't we um you know i think we you know we I'll probably put anyone's on and enjoy it but you guys have seemed to i don't know it's i've watched a, a few of you guys it's been like oh okay yeah i like these guys and obviously i'm subscribed to you guys every time you post stuff boom it's straight up and it's like Street, you know, it says, "Do you want to stream this to your Fire TV?" I'm like, "Yes, please." And then it's, on, it's just like, <laughs> oh, really so, uh, thank you." But yeah, no, it's you know, it's been really good. It's just, it's just interesting. Like I said, I think we all kind of have similar ideas from the offset as, "Oh, yeah, I like to do this and stuff." And as I said, I think a lot of a lot of us, there's, um, I think there's there's up the Villa podcast with uh, with Luke Robinson who came out. I say came out, you know, they started doing their stuff just before us. You know, great bunch of lads and whatever. I think same kind of thing with them. Um, you know, they wanted to, and, and obviously they do, and, and we do as well, but you try and just get as many Villa fans as possible, as uh, you know, involved. But then obviously there'll be some people who, who maybe, oh yeah, I fancy a bit of that. So, I mean, it's, it's good that there's a lot of, there's a lot of variation, isn't there? And it's, I yeah. suppose it's, I don't look at it as competition, you know, because it's, I mean, it's, it's good to, like you guys, obviously you posted about your, um, was it your last Villa Villa podcast, which was number one in the charts? Was it? Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Like, I, I saw a load of people were. Um, I think it may have been the Villa Talks podcast. There were 
obviously quite a new one. I've, I've listened to one or two, one or two of theirs. Yeah, they posted that they were quite high. So I thought, oh, well, let's let's have a look. And it was like number one on Apple for uh, like sports news. And like I, I mean, that's crazy, man. Like you know, it because at, at the end of the day, when you boil it down, it's just Dan and I who are you know, <laughs> friends talking about Aston Villa. Yeah, um, and it was like fifty four in America. Like the yeah. NFL podcast was only like ten higher. Like I couldn't yeah. believe it. Like it's it's like you know I'm I'm an extremely humble guy. Like about it. Like and I still like I saw it. I sent it to Dan. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like, um, but yeah, like it, it's nice to it's nice to see as I say. Like after such a, a you know a long time, because um, you know at the end of the day we all do this fun and that's all that matters. But when you get, you know, little little add-ons like that, it, yeah. it just kind of makes it that much better and it keeps you motivated and, and wanting to do it because, you know, there have been times where Dan and I have sat down uh, and, and gone, like, we don't really want to do this. Like, you know, yeah. the, it's harder when you're losing as well. And it may sound really fickle, but um, when we were allowed to do the podcasts in person, Dan and I, uh, the last one we did in person, we met up after the Leicester game, obviously before the whole lockdown or whatever yeah and it was just an hour of dan and i uh just you know depressed as hell uh you know trying to convince ourselves that sam allardyce was the right man to take villa on um <laughs> you know all that kind of stuff yeah uh, so you know uh little little things like that you know like with with how it's ranked uh in uh on the apple podcast charts you know they make them them lows worth it really it's that it's that kind of appreciation as well isn't it um because when when I do what we do, I'm kind of like, you know, we'll record it or we'll talk and I'll be like, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, or, you know, that, that, that was really good. And I'll post it and then you look and you're like 12 views. And then I'm thinking, hang on, I've, I've looked at it 10 times, you know, just to check a couple of things. So, you know, and you kind of think what's going on. And you always, you always then look at it in the negative side. Oh, it's rubbish and all that kind of stuff. So to get that appreciation, you know, to show you guys high in the charts at the top of the charts, you know, is, you know, it's good, isn't it? And it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I, I'm going to say it's hundred percent well-deserved. It's, um, you know, I think, you know, people need that. So it's, you know, fair play to you guys. It's, um, it's human nature you know, at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, I yeah. think whatever, you, whatever you do, you want to, you want to be the best at what yeah. you do and you want people to recognize that. Um, uh, and listen, you know, we've been there many a time, our podcasts, we struggle to get over like a hundred views or 150 and, we thought it was you know it was brilliant content um but yeah I th- it's it's all about perseverance and it's i think as well it's it, it's you know sort of uh playing the algorithm right uh just yeah. some a lot of the time it's literally all about right place right time we've put out yeah, brilliant exactly. podcasts we've felt that have not got the views they deserve because we've gone five days later to talk about a game and yeah and- exactly yeah we, we we've had that with um with some of the stuff we've done um I think sometimes the the time of the day as well that you, you you might put it out. Yeah. Say 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 like um. Uh, obviously, we played. When did we play Leicester? I'm all over. Sunday, wasn't it? Sunday, yeah. Yeah, so we played Sunday. So I got as I I stayed up and uploaded it, so it was ready at like seven a.m. the next morning, um, and that kind of in terms of the analytics, it, it sat pretty well, I think, because. People then on the morning, whether it be subscribers or people going through Twitter, they see and they're like, all right, okay, I'll, I'll watch this or listen to this or whatever. Um, whereas then, you know, maybe if you, and then they can listen at work or on their way to work or whatever they're doing on the morning, getting ready for work. But then say you post it at 10 o'clock, you've almost missed that boat. Yeah, everyone's at work, everyone's yeah. you know, at uni, whatever, doing stuff. It's a really difficult thing to balance. And as well, what makes it even weirder at the moment is that, there are still a lot of people who, you know, may be furloughed or have lost their jobs. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, whilst there may be everybody free at 11 a.m. one day, they're not the next day because, you know, you know, life happens. Uh, it's, yeah. it's a really hard, it's a really difficult thing to balance. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I find that, um, <clears throat> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do a recording and then I'll sit up and I'll, 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 I'll edit it. And you kind of put those hours in and I'm sure you've, you've done the same. You put the hours in, you post something and you're excited and then you're kind of like, what's going on here? Why is, why is no one listening? It's just like you say, I think it does a lot of it just does come down to 
right place, right time, um, like we've said. And that has, you know, in terms of when you look at the analytics of certain things, when you go on, you know, how, how it's been looked at on Spotify or iTunes and whatever and YouTube, it does the time difference makes a massive kind of change to certain things. Um, obviously, you've done, uh, you've do, I've seen you do other stuff as well. I can't think of what the um, the sites are called, but and you've done like match match uh, reports yeah. and match commentary for other kind of um, websites. Uh, it- yeah, so I, I I do I do some features for fans bet who are a partner with Heart of the Hole. Um, yep. I use that term loosely because we don't share any of their offers or anything like that. We're, at the moment, we're uh, very busy, but they're kind of like. They're a, they're a gambling company, which I'm a bit eh, about, but yeah. um, they, I think like, I think their whole thing is half of the, like the proceeds that are, so if people gamble with us as their like affiliate, they, uh, half of the losings or whatever, you know, what they don't get yeah. um, comes back to us and we basically reinvest that in fan projects um and ryan at the time uh, he's no longer with us on the podcast he's not dead he's just not, <laughs> not part of heart Hole. i should have been clear there um he <laughs> choice of words eh? yeah, along with us. Done there. um so ryan uh he was an avid gambler he's uh, a recovering addict uh so a load of respect for ryan he gambled a lot uh which we didn't really know about we knew he gambled but i guess, it, I guess it's kind of it, it comes with football doesn't it like and it, it shouldn't and I, I shouldn't have to say that but people uh, you know, whether it's just a fiver here or there, uh, you know, on, on Akers or whatever, it, it's sadly a part of the game. Um, uh, so Ryan actually struck up this partnership, did some really good things. I think he took about 50, uh, like, underprivileged uh, uh, school kids uh, in the surrounding areas of, of, of Aston and Birmingham uh, to Villa Park. We got them tickets, um, which is amazing. Uh, just stuff like that. We... Uh, we also did a half marathon, uh, me and Dan Horton, who also runs a sports podcast called Sports Weekly. So I'm going to plug that for him. Um, we ran a half marathon uh, last October. I think, it's, yeah, it's coming up on about a year now um, for the Stillian Petro Foundation. So there are like a load of different kind of like facets to Heart of the Holt, um, you know, in terms of like charity and community and, and us wanting to give back. Um, but yeah, so I, I kind of digress there. Um, I do I do write some features for fans, but um, it's mainly Villa stuff. Sometimes I touch on European football. Um, they kind of like at the end, they'll add. Um, I should really stop doing predictions on them actually because I'll predict things and they'll put odds there, and I don't want to encourage that. No, oh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I I do. So it's, they're kind of more. Um, I want to say like uh, in a column style. Um, yeah because they're a lot less uh, informal when it comes to like the other match reports and stuff I do uh, for another site called Vavil. Um, I do, I range from, you know, championship content. I do a lot of Villa stuff for them uh, and more European football as well um, into lives, match previews, reports, whatever. Um, just trying to build up like a strong portfolio um, because, you know, obviously the podcast is kind of, uh obviously it's great because uh you know for someone who's trying to get into the sports you know sports media industry uh you know instantly it's showcasing you know editing uh skills stuff like that uh yeah. but then also you know you've kind of got the other angle of of dan and i presenting and, and you know being a pundit potentially or whatever um yeah but again heart of the whole is kind of you know the villa Filler podcast is uh I don't want to say like a vanity project, but like the podcast is a, like, it's, it's kind of morphed into this thing where it's like, it's about Dan and I, and, you know, like obviously Villa's the main focus of it. Um, but you know, like, you know, you kind of said you enjoy the podcast. You like listening to Dan and I, because, yeah. you know, uh, and I think that's what we try and do to like, like set us apart because as you kind of touched on this, there's so many Villa podcasts. Yeah. Uh, you kind of have to do something different. And I think, uh, you know, whether it be kind of uh, we like to go a bit deeper and, and kind of look at it statistically, um, because I think that's something that not everyone touches on or has the time to touch on. Because, you know, Dan, come in, Dan comes into these podcasts with like three pages of notes uh, yeah. and he shows me up half the time. I'm like, wow, I'll prepare some notes. Uh, but, you know, Dan, uh, you know, he takes pride in, in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, we, we've tried we've tried to do that from time to time um it's what i like to do um on every pod sometimes 
for whatever reason, if you've got other people on, you kind of go off on a tangent somewhere and you don't kind of have the time. But the lad Joe, who does it with us, he's kind of the stat man. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of different because it just adds a bit more value, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Something else. But obviously, you know, Dan, um, I saw the, um, it was a Heart of the Holt tweet the other day and it's Dan going through Jack Grealish's numbers from the Leicester game, which was, it was great. And as well, it's, you know, it's great numbers and, you know, we all kind of can see, I think, I think it's Villa fans. It's almost like not just that, not just the last couple of years, but the last four or five years. So used to Jack producing these kind of numbers, not necessarily the goals and the assists, but everything else. He's always been one of the better players, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, but aside from that, just the way Dan says it and whatever, it's just like, I found myself as he's going through it. He's just like, yes, yes. Everything. Smile. Yeah. Do you know, it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then, Obviously, I saw it and then you guys, it's been posted on the, the Twitter and you just watch it and you're like, yeah, I love this. I just love it. Just as he goes through, you know, most key passes, most big chances created. And you're like, yes, come on. Yes, Dan. And it's just great. And, you know, and I think that kind of stuff just adds that value. And obviously you guys, like you said, doing the stats and that kind of stuff, it is, um, you know, it's just that extra, extra kind of bit. I, I think sometimes, and it's not just Villa podcast, it's just any any podcast um can just they can just talk and talk and talk. Um, I think sometimes you want something else to maybe. I mean, it's not going to be everybody, but people like me, probably like you as well, like to work off those numbers and kind of. I suppose it's looking at a game in context as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think oh, yeah, when we, you look at Sky Sports and it's so like Liverpool or Manchester United yeah, bias, yeah. and whenever you know they may get someone on like Mika Richards, who I think is a brilliant pundit, a breath of yep, fresh air, um, doesn't. You know, I think he's he's been fairly objective when it comes to Villa, uh, yeah. but obviously he's not gonna he's not gonna talk about the club. Uh, you know how you or I, you and I are gonna are gonna talk about Villa if 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 given that platform. So I think as well, it's just kind of like, uh, and, and we've seen it a lot with Gabby, which I think is brilliant that he's on Talksport. Um, I love that he's there fighting the corner for Villa fans, and it, you know he, he says he says what's on his mind, but it's. Uh, you know, whether some people may think it's delusion or not, you know, uh, I think he got kind of caught up in a Twitter storm about the Iniesta-esque comparison, which I think, first of all, he was right about. Um, but it's well, just- the, the thing is, he, he said it, 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 was a, it was a comparison because how many players can you, you know, when you look at him, he's not, he's not different. He's not like your typical winger. Yeah. Because he's not an out-and-out winger, is he? I mean, he can certainly play there and he's great there. Also can play number 10, number eight. Um, so I think Iniesta, the way he moves and the way he just, it's almost one of them. Iniesta would get the ball and it's just boom, players all Magic, around him. Yeah. yeah, the same. So I think it was right. And people are just kind of, they're taking it, those words, Iniesta, Grealish. Yeah. Take it out of context, don't they? So, so yeah, I think Gabby being on TalkSport is brilliant. I know he, so easy. he riles people up, doesn't he? But I think they all do. But it's nice to have someone fighting our corner. Um, because it, one, one thing that annoyed me, I think, was... You know, we, we beat Liverpool 7-2. And it almost seemed to be that like within a day or two, it was like, yeah, okay, we'll forget about that. But yeah. but with the with the top six and in particular, you know, Liverpool, Man United, Man City, if they get if they, if they went and beat Bayern Munich 4 0, you know, then they'd talk about it for weeks after that great performance, all this kind of stuff. And you're thinking, you know, hang on, we've beat, we avoided relegation by a point last season. Liverpool romped home, won the Premier League, they're world champions, they've been brilliant for two years and we've absolutely battered them. And it That's could have been. Yeah, we, we had um, we had uh, Alex Richards from the Mirror um, as like a neutral guest on um, our, our post-match after the Liverpool game and one of the first things he said was, it could have been 10. Yeah. And it, it, you know, and it's, you know, they'll say deflections, I've got about the injuries and all this kind of stuff, but, you know, to win like that, you don't I mean, shoot, we, you never know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we haven't, you know, it's just one of them, isn't it? We, like, you know, we, we've been bad on and off for a number of years, haven't we? And there's not too many times that we have been on the end of that scoreline. So I think, you know, sometimes there's got to be a big bit of appreciation for for us. And we Absolutely. don't really get it. So it's, it's nice to hear Gabby kind of plugging us a bit, isn't it, really? Helps. Yeah, and to, to, to circle back on that is, you know, it's so like other under other pundits like Roy Keane, uh, other people. I mean, Adrian Durham was even saying stuff on Talksport about how Jack Grealish needs to be coached better. Like holds, holds I think, us back, didn't he? Is what he said. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's crazy that there are people who are even saying these kind of things. Um, but there's definitely 
kind of a market for, uh, you know, obviously we're not mainstream, we're not Sky Sports or whatever, but people, not necessarily Villa fans either, are interested in how Villa perform on that deeper kind of level, yeah, which is absolutely. why Dan and I do it because, you know, I mean, we had, we've had an influx of Arsenal fans after the Emmy Martinez sign-in video um, who have subscribed and watched. But I think, um, I, you know, I, I can't speak on behalf of you, but I know, uh, you know, Dan and I, uh, we watch as many football games as possible, whatever league, whatever nation. Uh, yeah. We're into that. Dan's a massive uh, FM football manager geek. Um, and it, it's stuff like that, you know, where I think... Um, not to to criticize him now, but I think we we just have such a, a deeper like love and uh you know desire to like learn more from the game. And I think yeah. you can't do yeah. like anyone can hop on a podcast uh, and obviously this isn't uh, a, a disrespect to anyone and just go, ah, oh, Villa were crap, Villa were amazing, blah, blah, blah. That's great, but I already know that. So I don't need to listen to a podcast for them to tell me that. I want to know why. Yeah, and I think that's why we do what we do. Yeah, uh, it's bang on because you could say, you know, okay, Aston Villa, for example, we'd lose four nil, and then you come on and say, you know, people Aston Villa rubbish, they lost four nil. Well, no, actually, um, you know, we had more possession, we had more chances, more passes. We were just we lost four nil because we we you know we weren't savvy to their ball over the top between you know left back and centre half or whatever. Something like that just adds a bit more context to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think then people, I don't know, I feel like sometimes people can get caught up in the emotion of a game and a result. Yeah. Of a little rubbish. And as well, if other people listen, then it gives them a bit more of an understanding. Well, Villa weren't rubbish. They just got done on the counter however many times, which is one yeah. of those things, isn't it? And I think it's good to just completely put the game into context and just also, you know, there are times when... You, we, we've obviously seen it times where we've been absolutely terrible all game, but I think when you look at it, when you look at stuff statistically, sometimes a scoreline, there'll be times a scoreline doesn't reflect the actual game. But also, even if we were poor and the scoreline's poor, well, is there anything from the statistics that highlights why? Also, on the other side, could does it highlight some positives going forward? And yeah. again, you can kind of take that, can't you? That's a spin. Well, we were poor this week, but do you know what was good? Jack Grealish created eight chances that game. You think, okay, we'll go, thing, yeah. get, get going forward. Yeah, okay, we could get the goals and, and things like that. I think it's good because, as you say, that, that's one thing. And I've noticed it, not just Villa podcasts. I've noticed it on a lot of podcasts where um, it's fine. People do it for, for the love of the game, don't they? Where they just talk, ah, we're rubbish and all this kind of stuff. And it's kind of like, okay, well, we all know that. We've just watched the same game. So to add that bit of context, that bit of stuff is, is great. And, you know, like, I totally agree with you. Like what you said, you and Dan... Um, it's engaging. It's great to watch. I watch it. I'm a massive fan, as I've said. Um, and obviously a lot of other people are as well. So, you know, obviously what you do is great. Um, and obviously from my point of view, it just, I w- always wanted to kind of get you or you and Dan, you know, to come on just to chat to you guys. Cause you know, it's, it's nice to, to see these guys who I'm watching, you know, most week, <laughs> most weeks and whatever. I appreciate that. Um, man. And just to kind of find out a bit more about, you know, the origins and you guys and stuff like that. So, so obviously with your, with your involvement in this, your love of the game and obviously what you're doing at university, what's the, what's the personal aim then going forward? It's kind of difficult because the landscape is changing so quickly. Um, I'm, I'm currently in the process of, you know, preparing to write my dissertation, which is about why the Premier League should, uh, adopts their own streaming service in, uh, to distribute the games, which is obviously quite topical at the moment with yep. uh, pay-per-view issues, uh, Sky Sports, BT Sport, Amazon Prime. You know, we've like <laughs> sometimes I look at some some clips that come up on. Uh, I know Sky Sports have just launched a new YouTube channel called Sky Sports Retro, uh, and it'll be like fresh-faced Gary Neville in 2013. You know, making his debut on Sky, and even looking at that just kind of visually and seeing how far they've come and now obviously we're in an era where games are being broadcast on Amazon Prime it's kind of hard to say I'd like to go into broadcasting obviously whatever platform that may be and you know hopefully you know uh, the the platform that me and Dan have created on the Villa Filler will allow us to do that Um, I think the industry at the moment is very kind of uh, you know there's, there's TV and then there's fan media and then that's all you are you're just fan media 
um, someone, uh, uh, I mean, I was on, I featured on the BBC Sport uh, Transfer Talk Show, yeah, uh, which yeah. was an amazing experience. And I really appreciate the producers for reaching out and this kind of stuff. And I'm pretty sure in the description, it's like Aston Villa blogger Dan. And I'm kind of like, okay, well, that's fair. I can kind of understand why you're coming at that. But there's almost this kind of arrogance towards it. Like, yeah. they're the little guys. We're, you know, we're the, you know, we're the BBC, maybe. We're these big yeah, exactly, corporations. Yeah. Um, you know, people have got to get their chance somewhere. And whether, I mean, even if you look at someone like Dan Bardell, you know, he's, he's a bloke who's in his 30s, who is, uh, who had a career doing one thing. And because of the internet, he's now, you know, actively trying to pursue a career in, in, in sports media. Um, yeah. which is great. You, you've got to give credit to that. Uh, you know, the, that kind of opportunity wasn't around like 10 or 15 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a potentially saturated market. Uh, but, you know, everyone's just trying to achieve their dreams, really. Um, I enjoy writing a lot as well. I think during lockdown, I kind of rekindled my love for that because, you know, obviously there was a load of Bundesliga action on La Liga before the Premier League came back. Um, and with a lot of free time, I was just kind of like, well, I better put myself to use. You know, I could, I could easily just sit here and play foot champs on FIFA or play uh, Call of Duty and, and not really get anything done. Uh, but I, you know, I just thought we'll, we'll be a bit more productive, kind of hopefully add a new, uh, you know, an, another bow to, to to what I'm kind of doing, um, and, and just try really try and refine that. So uh, that was a very long and, and convoluted way of saying I don't really know. Um, <laughs> well, I, I suppose the thing is as well is that when you when you move into the sports and, and particularly football as well, which which you know globally is is probably the biggest sport in the world um, in the majority of countries in the world. Um, there is, I say there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of scope for opportunities in terms of, you know, you can be a football writer, you can be a journalist where it's a, as a presenter or broadcaster. So there's lots of things. So I suppose for you, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of working out what you'd like to do most, I suppose, in all fairness, because you, because doing this, you know, heart of the whole, you've had the, you know, you've experienced a, a, a bit of a few things, haven't you, really? Yeah, like, especially in terms of social media, like that's such a big thing now. Um, you know, clubs have dedicated social media accounts. Yeah. Uh, you know, even you know, clubs like Bayer Leverkusen having like an English account, which is, you know, uh, obviously they provide updates and stuff, but the kind of, the whole purpose of that is to get as many Bayer Leverkusen fans as possible by yeah. making these funny tweets, tweeting memes, stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there is, there is a, as you say, a whole lot of opportunities. And yeah, I've done the whole social media thing, uh, done the kind of production things on the, you know, behind the scenes in terms of editing the podcast, uh, editing videos, stuff like that, and the writing. Um, and yeah, I think it's just like, it's a good sort of all round thing, I guess. Like not, uh, you know, anyone can set up a blog, which I think is great as well. But I think what people, you know, at the end of the day, like, these these corporations and companies that are looking to hire people want to see what kind of an impact you can have on an audience and i think that's why i'm really lucky in terms of uh you know being being a part of heart of the whole obviously it's not something i've created but it's something that i've helped develop uh, and you know there's a there's a good portfolio for that um but yeah it, as i say it's kind of it's difficult i'm not sure what i want to do but i'm not there's, you know, I'm so I'm I'm up for anything pretty much. Like I'll, uh, you know, in the sports yeah. industry, whether it be broadcasting, or writing, uh, camera camera operator, or whatever. It's it's all stuff that interests me, uh, and yeah. it probably doesn't help because most people are like have their one thing. Uh, but you know, I, I I I'm kind of going at the angle where if I have experience doing everything, uh, hopefully I'll find something. <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you want to do it, I suppose. It's it's a case of not not putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. You know, I'm going to go and be a Sky Sports news presenter. I'm not saying yeah. you want to do that. I'm just saying, you know, I want to go and do that. And then it doesn't happen. You're like, oh, what do I do now? So it's yeah, having exactly. that, you know, so you kind of open it up. Um, okay, so obviously Aston Villa, which which is good for the kind of stuff that we're doing, uh, you know, podcast wires and whatever. Um, we've been we've been fantastic so far when we started the season. Four from four. Amazing. Um, I kind of, as each game goes, I suppose I say as each game goes, um, you know, I suppose the last two I kind of expected, you know, it's it's great to have got two wins from two for the first games because 
I think a lot of fans thought, get to Liverpool and Leicester games, see how we get on. A point in either of those games would be a bonus. So it's nice to have got the good start against Fulham and Sheffield United. And then we move on and we've actually beaten Leicester. We've beaten Liverpool. So it's great. So what are your kind of thoughts, the immediate future, as in Leeds tomorrow night? And also what are your thoughts going forward for the rest of the season? Kind of what is the limit for this team? I don't think there is a limit. Um, we're in a really weird world and, you know, it's so, uh, it's easy to get carried away with how good Villa are and I get carried away every day thinking about it, but I can't help but feel we would struggle, uh, not as much, but we would certainly struggle if Villa Park was full to the rafters with 42,000 people. And it pains me to say that uh, because I love Villa fans. I think we're amazing, but I also think, you know, we're simultaneously the worst fans. Uh, I, you know, I say that on all of our podcasts, I th- you know, when, uh, you know, when your back's up against it and you're under the floodlights, uh, you know, there's something magical about it. And uh, whilst I wasn't there for the Everton game last season, uh, I'm constantly reminded of how good the atmosphere was. Uh, and it's nights like that where I think Villa really are uh, unstoppable. I think, uh, you know, we we second in the Premier League, a point takes us to the top going into the weekend. Obviously, Everton, Liverpool can still pick up points. Um, but, I mean, it, we're, in a, we're in a really bizarre situation. Uh, there's not a lot of expectation. I don't think I'm not, I'm trying not to put a lot of expectation on, no. on these players' shoulders. We can't forget they finished 17th by a point and we've gone and signed uh, a bunch of players from the championship uh, and and else, you know I'm, I'm really boiling it down here um, but you know you know obviously Matty Cash Ollie Watkins fantastic players I don't think anyone expected them to make the step up um, no. you know so <laughs> as long as I can't believe I'm saying this because we're starting second but as long as we stay up I don't really care I think we can really kick on getting that top 10 um, I don't want to say the Liverpool result was a freak because you have to be in it to win it and uh, yeah I think they, they missed they missed uh, Mane and and, and, yeah. uh, and Allison. That that's without a doubt. But you can only beat what's in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think you've just got to look at a side like Everton as well. Uh, I'm absolutely in love with what Carlo Ancelotti is doing at Everton. Uh, it, it's great to see you know a, a traditional club doing so well as well. Uh, obviously, I'd rather that not be at the detriment to uh, to, to us uh, and our title charge. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's. I don't know. I think it's it's weird because we're again we're at that stage of the season where anything can still happen. I think someone may have tweeted, "No one below thirteenth mathematically can catch us." So that's weird, unless we like you know lost all of our games. Um, but as as long as Villa keep putting in the performances like we have, you know we've we've really grown under Dean Smith. There's been a slight tactical change um, where we've kind of got. Uh, Louise and McGinn in this double pivot, which I think works really well at the base of the midfield. Ross Barkley really has changed everything for Villa, yeah. uh, you know, taking so much of a weight off Jack Grealish. Um, but I think, you know, Lee, we keep saying it on the podcast, every game, Dan and I are like, this is a really good yardstick for how far we've come. Yeah. But we've beaten Liverpool, who were world champions. We've beaten Leicester, who probably should have came second last season if it weren't for a disastrous sort of post-lockdown turn yep. and now we're arguably Leeds are the toughest opposition of the lot and people listening may think that's strange but what Marcelo Bielsa has done at Leeds can't be underestimated and whilst I don't I feel like Dean Smith isn't given the respect he's done at Villa we have to pay the respect to Bielsa for what he's done especially when I remember watching the, the Liverpool game I was at work I had it up on my phone and seeing that Leeds lineup and thinking Jesus Christ, they've really that they're, like they're playing their championship team. What like what are they expecting here? And you know, obviously they lost the game, but to go four three against Liverpool, I mean it's not seven two, but uh for that side to compete in the way they did against Leeds and even against Manchester City uh like a few weeks ago, it, it's quite remarkable. So I think we'll have a very good kind of estimation as to how Villa will do uh after the game, really, you know, for the rest of the season. Um yeah, Leeds definitely. are going to be tough. We can't underestimate that. I was at Ellen Road for that feisty affair um, a few years back in the Championship. And uh, yeah, it's there's a lot riding on this. I think, I hope we don't get too carried away either because I'm kind of sat here and I'm like, it's amazing. As, you know, I want Villa to keep winning games. 
But yeah. if, you know, if we drop a point or two, I hope there's not too much sort of outrage because we've come so far in such a long, uh, in such a short space of time. Um, I just hope Villa can keep it up. It's, yeah, it really, you know, Dean getting us promoted, the whole 10-game win run, you know, he gives us our club back and now he's giving, he's he's taking it up a level with, with, yeah. with this, so far this season. Uh, and I'm sure this is this can probably get clipped up when Villa get relegated this season because they don't win another game. But uh, <laughs> it's it's I, you know I'm I'm just in love with with Aston Villa at the moment, it, it, and it, it's easy to be because we're doing so well. But I just think there's so much on and off the pitch to be proud of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm kind of similar to you in that we've won four games, and I'm kind of thinking, okay, that's that's a brilliant foundation for us to stay up. You know, yeah, we've got we've got the twelve points, so it's you know we only need you say another twenty eight. It's probably going to be less than that, more like what 20, 22, 23 points that you'd need. Um, so again, then you kind of think, how many wins do we need? So it, it's great, and I think you look at the for a number of years when you looked at a championship, you've looked at it and thought that's that's competitive. That is that's that's decent. And this season, I've looked at it the first time. Maybe it's because Aston Villa haven't been in it, um, but I've looked at it this season I thought ah, it doesn't look as good as it has done and whether that's because you've got you know us in the Premier League Leeds in the Premier League yeah. you know and it's I mean West Brom I'm not really sure where I'd kind of put them you know because you kind of look at Leeds as a bit more of a traditional side yeah but but when I looked at the Premier League start of the season I looked at the fixtures and you go through them and you kind of think okay where, where are the bankers where are the home bankers and I, I struggled to find them because you know, the likes of Burnley and Sheffield United who are down there. Real surprise. Yeah, I'm surprised at that. They're good sides because they've got a they've got a foundation that they've built on and they have a style of play. They've got um ident- they've got an identity that's made them hard to beat. And that you know they've they've stayed in Premier League for half many years. And I think Leeds as well, Leeds have got a style, they've got an identity, and it's made them hard to beat. And they've done well, um, especially those two games, as you say. I mean on paper, it's they've got the two wins they've got this season are against Sheffield United and Fulham, and it's okay. But then, but then obviously you look at it, you go deeper, and it's they ran Liverpool close. They got a point against Man City, so there's a bit more there. But I think, as you've said, you look at their team, and you know they've got Stuart Dallas playing left back. He's a you know he's primarily a right winger. Yeah. Um, you know, in their defenders, Detailing players like that. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of think I'm one of them that. To gauge the quality of a team, I look at them and say, who would I have at Villa? Who would I want at my team? And I think when realistically, when I look at Leeds, there's no disrespect to them. Um, I'd probably only maybe, um, you know, Phillips. But then he'd go where Douglas Louise is playing. And then it'd be, who would I have? I probably would rather have Douglas Louise, in all fairness. So I'd struggle to find which of those players I'd, I'd have in our team. But he's kind of, Bielsa's has done, I suppose it, he's, He's obviously, there's, there's got to be some kind of quality there, but I think he's looked at them, the personalities of those players. So Stuart Dallas, as we mentioned, I think Luke Ayling as well. Quality-wise, they've got a decent amount. Have they got enough quality to be top, top players in the Premier League? You'd say no, but personality-wise, they stick to Bielsa's formation, his style, everything he wants, his tactics, and he gets the absolute best out of his players. Yeah. Um, so when it comes down to it, I really, really don't know... Um, how the game's going to go. I think I did say to someone earlier one that we'd win 1-0. nil. we get a late goal, not not talking late, like Leicester late, but, you know, <laughs> se- too late. Se- yeah, se- 70 plus late or something, get a late goal. Because um, I watched them against Wolves um, on, was it on Monday, that game? And they played reasonably well, but again, it's, it's one of them. It's all well and good having a lot of the ball and, and kind of being aggressive and, and pressing as much as they did. But then, they didn't really create that many kind of clear cut opportunities, and and you've got and you get you get punished in the Premier League, don't you? I mean, we we the saw that time season. and time again. Yeah, like last season, how many games were there that we came away with nothing? And you thought we didn't really deserve to come away with nothing there, but then when yeah. you when you break it down, it's kind of like yeah, okay, we had the ball a reasonable amount of time, we weren't terrible, and they weren't particularly unforced errors that caused us to lose. But then going forward, we didn't do enough to score any goals, and that happened time and time again. So. That may be the case with Leeds this season, but I suppose we're going to see. And obviously, I wouldn't want that to happen to us in terms of they beat us on you know tomorrow night. Um, so I'm going to go with one nil. That's what I'm thinking. If you had to give a prediction, what would you say? Uh, I think I said in my preview, which I posted just before, 
three one win to Villa. I think there's there's goals in this side. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't think we can we can underestimate what what Leeds have done either. I think there there are a lot of uh, you know f- uh, forcible mistakes that you can get out of Leeds. Like you just got to look at someone like Notch. I think he, he's given away three penalties so far this season. Yeah. Not had a very good time. Uh, and you know we I mean you, you can't. I don't think we can not back a team that put seven past Liverpool to, to score, yes. uh, to not score against Leeds. Um, but, you know, I think the defence has been colossal. I think the two goals we conceded against Liverpool were very good goals from Salah. You know, you have to give it to him there. I, th- I think um, aside from the, the build-up play, which wasn't necessarily anything good, it was a couple of balls forward and he, he found himself in the box, didn't he? And yeah. There's not a lot of players in the Premier League that could have scored the goals in terms of finished it from there because he's finishing. No. He's he's probably up there with maybe Kane and possibly Aguero as the kind of yeah. the, the best finishers in the league. So, I mean, he took those goals well. But um, yeah, I mean, I agree. It's certainly going to be tough. But I think they've got a few injuries, haven't they? Um, yeah, Phillips, Phillips notably is out. Um, the, the, there's a few others as well, which I don't think bear too much of a... I think uh, possibly. I think I read. I read then. Cooper maybe out possibly. Yeah, uh, I should know this because I literally wrote an article about it this morning. I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Um, but here we are. I mean, you've got you've got to take the opportunity. Um, obviously, Villa are without uh, Courtney Hawes, who doesn't really feature anymore, uh, much to my uh, sadness. Uh, Wesley, obviously, Heaton's back in training, which is really good. Uh, and it was nice to see Engels on the bench of the week as well. Um, I think Villa fans have forgotten. How good that Mingles partnership was. He kind of he's been hung out to dry. And I don't know if you if you watched the um, Tottenham Hotspur Amazon documentary, but I was watching that and you are you know how he tries to put his foot over the ball and you're like, yeah. God, like what are you doing? Uh, and it kind of uh, I remember, well, that, we, that, we deserve more from that game. Really yeah, hundred percent. That game. I remember being at that game and half time. I think we were was it two. 2 1 down at half time because yeah. they uh, out we went 1 0 up, Old World oh. equalized, and then they got a penalty, didn't they? Yeah, Raina saved it and uh, Son put in the rebound. I know that because I mean, obviously, I was at the game, but I watched like you, I watched um, All or Nothing, I watched it the other day, um, and I remember that game coming up and watching, seeing the bits of it. But half time, I was like, how the hell are we losing this? And then full time, I just could not believe we didn't come away with anything because obviously, we got back in it with Engels scoring, yeah. And that, you know, I think to be honest with Engels, he's pretty good on he's pretty good on the ball. One of the first things I noticed about him was that he was a bit he was good on the ball, um, you know, good at passing. And I think that that was kind of to his detriment in that game. Whereas other players would have kind of just got rid of it and he tried to control it. And obviously, bit of bit of rain as well. It wasn't the best surface, and we all know what happened. But yeah, I think Engels is a because people, a lot of people were crying out, saying, why haven't we signed a centre-half in the, the window? And I kind of thought, we've got four. Yeah. And then obviously, worse comes to worse, you're looking at bringing Elmo in there. I don't think that will happen, but you've got Back four. Sp- well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you've got four centre-halves. You don't need anything else, do you? No. Um, and I think people forgot how good Engels was, in all fairness. So yeah, it was, was nice to see him there. But um but yeah, I'd just love to love to see us get something against Leeds tomorrow. A win would be nice, wouldn't it? 15 points and then we'll just cancel the season or something and, and then go points from there. the game, we'll win the league, won't we? So uh, yeah, but um, a, a massive, massive thanks for uh, for coming on. Obviously, it's nice for me to virtu- me. virtually meet you. Um, and um, yeah, mate, you're okay. and um, yeah, I'm sure we'll speak soon. But um, I, I think, yeah... Um, obviously, what, what we did do a number of weeks ago, we did a, something called The Debate. And we debated. It was me, um, a couple of lads from, from Villa together. We were with Everton fans, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs, everyone. Most of the teams from the Premier League who have Villa players, uh, Villa players who have England players in the team. We debated the squad and then the, the team as in who should be right back, who should be left back, etc. So... Um, I think I messaged you the other week yeah. um, about doing something similar uh, with Villa. So there'll be like me, you on there. I think Luke Robinson from um, up the Villa podcast, um, Ty Bracey, um, a few others. And we'll just kind of go through who's the best Premier League goalkeeper that Aston Villa have had. Things like that um, should be a good laugh, to be fair, because we had, we had a great laugh. But um, obviously, I'll be in touch about that. But yeah, massive, massive thanks for coming on. Um, obviously, I will continue to watch you guys because... 
I get the notifications and I stick it on the Fire TV because it tells me to. And I love it. And when I'm editing, I watch you guys, you and Dan. Um, and just, yeah, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, keep up the good work because, you know, you're brilliant at what you're doing. You deserve to be top of the charts as you have been. Um, and I think, you know, you're, you know, you mentioned about old videos and stuff like that. People, you know, get better of experience and whatever. Obviously, you guys are just going from strength to strength. And, um, yeah, I just, I just love watching your, uh, you know, your podcasts and whatever. So um, keep up the good work and massive thanks for coming on. Thank you, mate. Yeah, likewise as well. Keep up the good work. I've, I've listened to one or two when I've had the chance. I'm quite busy. I don't even get to listen to my own podcast. Um, <laughs> you know, I just kind of quickly quickly get that out. But no, uh, you know, keep up the good work. Looking forward to coming back on uh, in a few weeks to, to discuss, uh, you know, the, the best uh, Villa Premier League eleven. Yeah, definitely a nice one. Nice one. Well, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, obviously, you can find Dan on Twitter. Per Your personal... Twitter is at Dan Morgie, is it? At Dan Morgie 34. And then we obviously we've got um, at Heart of the Holt um, and obviously YouTube, Heart of the Holt. Um, we've got a website as well, haven't you? I think heart of the Holt dot com or dot co uk dot net. Yeah. yeah. Um, any anything else? Any other plugging we need to do? Uh, I think I've got all my plugs in actually this week. Uh, yeah, no, I appreciate again. I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah, no worries. Nice one. Obviously, uh, check them out. They are my favourite Villa podcast to watch. Um, I don't watch myself because we're not as good as them. Um, but yeah, really, really, they're, they're great. Uh, Dan and Dan doing the Villa Villa podcast. They're brilliant to watch. So watch these guys. Um, you find yourself kind of cheering at the things that they're saying. Uh, Dan with his stats, etc. Um, so yeah, um, and obviously everyone. Um, Follow us, guys, if you don't. So, yep, lovely, nice one. Thanks very much, Dan. Very much appreciated, and uh, we'll speak soon. Absolutely. Thank you.